All right, so today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different for you guys, and I'm going to be trying Nomad Sculpt uh, just for another one of my jewelry projects. And I've been really wanting to give this app a try uh, because I've seen some really cool work being done with it. So I know it's a really capable app. And uh, I recently got a tablet just to try to do some work uh, a little bit more mobile. So having something that I can just kind of sit down and relax, but also, you know, jot down some uh, sculpting ideas that I have is super useful. So this isn't really going to be like a tutorial or anything. I just wanted to share my experience with using this app for one of my pieces. Uh, so for this piece, I'm working on a deer skull. Uh, it's something that I've been wanting to try for a while. I want to add to my skull collection and I'm starting the sculpt the same way that I like to in blender with a pretty low poly count to start uh, just to kind of block out those primary forms and I'm mainly using the default brushes I don't really even know how to change the brushes or anything just yet uh, but so far every brush that I've tried has felt pretty similar to what you can find in blender so it feels pretty comfortable to work with so far, which is nice. It doesn't feel too much like I have to relearn some of the brushes like the clay strips or the crease brush or anything. Uh, those seem to be pretty universal. Um, so for me, the biggest thing by far that has been a difference between Nomad and Blender is the shortcut keys. Uh, I'm really used to using my shortcut keys on the keyboard for quickly sculpting in Blender. Um, mostly for navigation too, uh, just kind of orbiting around your piece and seeing what it looks like from different perspectives. Doing this on a tablet feels very strange to me. Uh, you have to kind of lift up your hand and use your fingers to orbit around and zoom in on parts of the model. So that's definitely taking some time to get used to, uh, mostly because it feels like when you lift up your hand, you have to like readjust that focal point that you're working on every time. So it's really not that big a deal. It's just I'm just kind of nitpicking on some of the biggest differences that I've found. Yeah, other than that, uh, my shortcuts I also have some of the numbers set up to really just the default brushes and blender too. So I mainly stick to clay strips, the crease brush, the move brushes, the mask brush, and also just the standard draw brush, which I use for uh, alphas sometimes. So I got some of you guys asking questions on uh, my setup for sculpting and I've been thinking about doing a video on that uh, just to show kind of my setup for speed sculpting in Blender. But back to using uh, Nomad for sculpting. Uh, so far I really like how everything is laid out. I really like the, the UI. Um, it's pretty straightforward and I like how easy it is to just drop in some primitive shapes if you need it and start sculpting right away. I think that's one of my favorite parts is that it doesn't feel as intimidating as Blender can feel sometimes. Um, you can really just kind of focus on the piece that you're doing. And when I want to just focus on getting my ideas out and just have some fun sculpting, um, that is super helpful. So I am using some reference images of some deer skulls uh, just on my phone that I have to the side of me. Uh, I know you can drop in images to kind of have them on the screen while you're sculpting, but I didn't really like how it was taking up some of my screen real estate, so I might experiment with that a little bit more in the future, but for now, uh, just having it off to the side for me worked out pretty nice. And I was working on this piece kind of the same way that I do in Blender as far as remeshing. Um, I typically like to start with a low poly like I said before, 
but then like as I move it up I'll remesh to a little bit of a higher poly count where needed. I don't typically like to use like Dynamesh or Dynetapo I think it's called in Nomad uh, and that's that feature where it kind of adds geometry for you as you sculpt. Uh, you don't really have to worry about you know stretching vertices and stuff. So that's something that Blender has that I've never really liked in the past. Um, but experimenting with it a little bit in Nomad, I actually switched to using Dynetapo at some point uh, just because it seems to work way smoother in Nomad than it does in Blender. So I'm definitely going to experiment with using that more in my workflow. And one of the other big things that I noticed is that the S Pen that my tablet came with uh, clearly has less pen pressure sensitivity uh, than my XP Pen tablet, which isn't really that big of a deal, but it is pretty noticeable. I do have to adjust the slider for the intensity of the brush uh, with my finger rather than just kind of adjusting, you know, the pressure that I'm using while sculpting. So again, really not that big a deal. It's not like a deal breaker or anything for sculpting with Nomad, but you know, every single time that you lift up your hand to adjust something with your finger, you're kind of taking away that focus from where your pen is on the model. And that can kind of slow you down and like trip you up on just focusing on the piece. So one of my favorite things that I've noticed so far is that overall it's just been a lot more fun and it's kind of hard to describe. I think it's just mostly because of how smooth it feels and how easy it is to kind of work on the go. Uh, but overall it's just a really enjoyable experience and I get messages from you guys all the time about, you know, what's the best way to learn digital sculpting and that's one of my top recommendations if you can find a way to make the experience fun if you can find a project that's really fun that you're passionate about that's going to keep you on the screen longer it's going to kind of force you to practice a little bit more and overall you're you're not going to look at it as sitting down to do work or you know buckling down to make yourself practice you're going to to want to do it and really i i think that's the most important takeaway that you can that you can get is to just enjoy what you're doing uh, so i'm excited about using nomad for more of my projects in the future and i don't think it's gonna replace sculpting in blender for me um, but i definitely can see myself maybe starting a sculpt in Nomad and kind of tweaking some ideas and maybe using it kind of more as a sculpting sketch pad um, and then maybe building on those ideas or importing it you know into Blender to work on them a little bit more and you know get them ready for like casting and stuff too. Uh, so like I said I typically like to start off my sculpts with a pretty low poly count but for this one I was kind of experimenting and using that higher poly count um, just because I wanted to see what that workflow was going to be like and starting with a lower poly count can definitely help you uh, especially if you're new to sculpting but you know there aren't any rules or anything so honestly start where you want but mainly for me it's just about you know trying to help your brain as much as possible to understand like the forms you're seeing in those reference images and that's something that's a lot easier to do with a lower poly count than a high one uh, at least for me I end up kind of chasing that perspective and going back over my mistakes but I think that's something that kind of gets easier with more and more practice so again there aren't any rules or anything in this it's it's all a matter of personal opinion and how you like to go about it, but it's really cool to see that you can actually get to a really high poly count just using a tablet. Um, typically, I only sculpt to like maybe 
2 million vertices tops for most of my work. Uh, I don't have to go too detailed because my pieces are printed so small. Really those fine details don't really matter too much. Uh, so one of my favorite features that I've been playing with so far is the tube tool in Nomad. This is kind of like the curve tool in Blender where you can add like a profile to a curve and just, you know, easily manipulate the curve. And this is something that I do in just a bit for the, uh, for the antlers of the deer. And that also just feels really smooth and easy to work with. And I can see that being really useful for some, uh, some jewelry modeling down the road. Uh, for different like shanks or the prong settings for some gems. So I can see incorporating that tool a lot with uh, some of my projects. All right, so for my final opinion on Nomad Sculpt, um, I definitely recommend this, especially to anybody who's looking to get into digital sculpting. Um, like I said, this is just something that's a lot more accessible than sculpting in Blender or ZBrush. Uh, and it works really well in my opinion. So I'm getting close to finishing this sculpt up. And overall I worked on it kind of here and there for just under five hours, I believe. And once it was completed, I did the uh, kind of the same process that I do in Blender where uh, I add all the objects together and then decimate them to lower that poly count to get it ready for 3D printing. Uh, so let me know if you guys are interested in seeing the casting process on this one. Uh, I might do a video on that. And also let me know if you're interested in any Nomad sculpting tutorials in the future. Uh, I think this app should work great for a lot of my organic jewelry work. So it's definitely something that I would be interested in. Uh, but if you stuck around this long, uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.